All right, this is Chester. Hi, Chester. All right, he um, has been with us since November because his mama had a house fire. And I'm cleaning him up this morning so he can go home um, from all of this and require minimum care until the pandemic is over and we're out of harm's way. So, first thing I have is a slicker brush. This is quite large. It's a Chris Christensen. Um, the teeth are super soft and they're long. Don't you see how flexible that is? Um, I don't, I mean, you could use a tiny one on him, but I've been using this for years. The goal with the slicker brush, I'm not touching his skin and letting the weight of the tool work. I'm not pushing with my hand, okay? Not ever. The areas you've got to look for are here behind the ears. And you can do that by taking your hand and just, I'm not pulling or tugging, I'm just setting. If I were to tug on his ear, then he'd pull away. See my pinky here? That's a bracket. I don't know if you can see that. I've got a pinky bracket down here. Um, and you're going to check behind the ears, do some brushing, look for little pin mats, things that might cause problems. Same thing with the ear itself. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm holding the ear, the hair, the ear by the hair right here and so I don't get the leather with my brush. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to get his leather. That's his leather here. Right there, it's a very sensitive area. They'll pull away from you and, and run out of dodge if you start to poke them in that area with your brush. So you wanna be real gentle. You know, if a dog's not letting you brush them, um, I haven't met a dog yet that won't let me brush them. But the, the thing with that is you have to listen to the dog. If they're scared of something, they're gonna tell you. If it's uncomfortable, they're gonna tell you. And it's our job to respect that. You know, if I come in and I start pulling on your kid's hair and I'm, um, up, oh, see, he just says, I don't like my paws. Okay, so that's another thing. What's going on with his paws? Why doesn't he want me to touch his paws? Probably because, um, like all little dogs, he's sensitive. But he does have some discoloration. Some little dogs will chew. So I want to make sure I look at the pads and don't see any signs of, um, you know, rawness, redness, knots between the toes. You want to look in between the toes. He's got no knots. He's just got a lot of hair. But um, some of them are sensitive, so I'll put a bracket again. See, this this is a bracket. See, I'm not. If I grab, he's gonna get aggravated. So I'm just gonna let him. I'm gonna make it his choice and let him rest that pet paw there. If he starts to pull away, then I will just put, you know, just hey, I need you here. I need you here, and then let him make the decision again. Um, it gets bad when you don't let them make the decision, and you keep pulling anyways, and then you're gonna have a knockdown, drag out fight. So um, Jester usually is very sensitive with his paws. He's a Maltese. And a lot of times they are. And um, he's learned that he can he can do a little pulling to get out of stuff. And so we just kind of have to work with him and let him know that I do respect him. I'm not going to hurt him. And that I'm going to, you know, not force him to do anything. And then, you know what? Then I can do my job. Okay, here's here's the bracket again. See the bracket? Now I'm going to say, I need you here. And I'm going to lift him up. See that? I'm not holding. See my thumb is loose? That's the key, guys. You want to brush your dogs, don't force them. Give them the guidance. I need you here and here, and then just let them make that, that, that decision. And if you do, you're not going to have any issues at all brushing your dog. Now, this tiny area, same thing. It's going to mat right around here. You want to check the sphincter area and make sure there's no poopy built up there. I don't know if you can see that. His is pretty clean. Um, I, I try to keep that up, you know, while he's here. Um, he is going to protect me. <gasps> Who are you protecting me from, Chester? Okay, same thing. Bracket, bracket, bracket. I'm just my hand this is my guide hand okay I tell him where I need him to be and I don't keep putting pressure on him I just say I need you in this little box you know so that I can do it and he's like okay see I'm a bumper here this is just a bumper he's not gonna try to break through that he's gonna say oh okay you're being respectful well now listen to you Chris and um I've seen this dog up in a sling um, from people that didn't have quite the handling skills not gonna name any names but um, I have seen him and I've had to come over and say, hey, get him out of that sling. He's fine. So, you know, everybody has their different styles. But um, the biggest thing with the dog is patience. And now here I've got a little pin mat. So once again, um, I'm going to just put my finger there and protect his ear. And we're going to brush through it. Okay. Now he's not the biggest fan of his face. He's shy. Um, and that's okay. But you see how muffed up his face is right now? This is the good part, guys. This is the part that you guys see. And um, see, once again, I'm putting a bracket behind his head, okay? I'm not, that's why I don't like, I don't like grooming nooses because there's no give. And if they do fight, it's going to, it's going to hurt him right here. You know, he's so sensitive right there. 
So I like to work and put a hand under and let him rest his head. Think about it. If I go, and I should, I'm not going to do it to him because if you actually um, get his hair down here, it will freak him out. Um, someone has done that, I, I'm assuming. He's been with us since he was a puppy, but um, he doesn't like the bottom of his chin handle. So he's going to pull away. So imagine if I've got scissors, right, right around his eyes, and I'm pulling his chin. If he is pulling up and away, he's going to he's gonna get that scissor right in this area. If I have him down here, you know, he they'll push their chin. A lot of dogs will fall asleep while I'm doing their faces. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to just do some real quick maintenance on them. Um, a 10 blade on a, a set of clippers is pretty much standard. Um, every set of clippers you get. I use a Bravera, and this is a fancy. Um, this is a, actually this is a Motion by uh, Wall. Okay, it's got a it's got a five and one blade there, a nine blade all the way to a forty blade, and it's controlled by this little switch. Okay, all the way to the left is the short or the longest length, which is a nine. All the way to the right is a forty blade, which is the shortest. Okay, so I like to go right at a 10 blade for the eye corners. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, now watch this guys. I'm gonna set him back a little bit so we have, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Okay, see, now I'm putting my head, my hand here. I'm giving him another bracket. See the bracket? No squeezing, it's nice and loose. I'm just giving him a guide. All right, and I'm gonna start to play with the hair. I mean, I want you guys at home to play with the hair around the eyes, get them real comfortable with you being in this area so they're accepting and they're thinking about it as love, okay? Remember my theme, love cures all. And um, if the dog feels like you're giving them love through this process and that you're not scared and that you're helping them, then, man, there's nothing that you can't do. A lot of dogs fall asleep while I do their faces. And most good groomers will tell you the same. Um, it should be a calm place to be um, and loving. And they don't like this crap in their eyes. It gets itchy. So once they realize you're helping them, man, they are all about it. Now, it's Chester has had issues. I saw in his last groom that um, he's having some troubles holding still. So I'm going to show you just with a little bit of love what that can do. And this is the stop area here, okay? This is, um, and you can kind of see where the hair grows. You don't want to touch anything that grows to the side, okay? All this stuff doesn't make sense in here. It's going in every which direction. So this stop area, I'm not going to touch this because that's going to mess up his, this is going to mess up his uh, visor, okay? And it's going to change the look of his face, and that's going to look really silly growing back in. Um, and they don't need you to cut it because the hair grows in such a way where it grows away from the eyes. Once you cut up in here, we can't fix that. So just be mindful of that while you're doing this at-home stuff. Now, um, real gentle. See, I'm not grabbing. You hold it like a pencil, all right? I like these because they've got a little space. And um, when, when my groomers came in here with their clippers like Jason Voorhees, you know, knifing it with a fist, I, I made them use these so they would learn how to use the handle, handle the clippers delicately and use it like the tool that it is. It's more for uh, art and painting than it is for, you know, cutting down a tree. So... It's real, real soft strokes, you know, um, and he's doing great. And I'm just going to get this little corner because he's got so much icky stuff in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to, I'm doing it slow for you guys because I'm trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Um, normally I just zip this out. But you want to clear out as much as you can to make him as comfortable as you can at this time. And you notice I'm not going to the skin. I'm lifting up, I'm lifting up the hair with the corner of my clipper, okay? Lift, just lifting it, and I'm not gouging into his skin. But you have to have him nice and, and nice and uh, relaxed in your hand to do this. So don't go forward unless you can get him calm. And um, if you can't get him calm, give me a call, and I'll give you some more tips. Um, but there are ways to do it. Remember, just love, love, love. Play, play, play with their faces while you're watching television at night. Um, you can't see him. He's starting to get cleared out there. Yeah. Um, this is not necessary here. Maltese have little tiny hairs that poke out everywhere, and I'm going to get him nice and clean because it's going to be a while, I'm assuming, before he can come in again. And uh, they're in between grooms right now. Um, this is called a maintenance trim. And see, once again, there's that bracket telling his nose where I need it to be. And I've got another little bracket here. I'm not grabbing at all, guys. You grab, you lose. That it's game over. They're tuning you out like a teenager when you don't make any sense. Um, you got to talk their language. And it's love and gentle, love and gentle. All my groomers know this, and they've been trained this way. And I'm proud to say that, you know, the ones that have left are still um, doing this. Now, I, you don't have to do this, but dogs that have ear infections, see this hair here? 
It's got a lot of excess hair. So once again, I mean, you probably won't do this at home, okay? This is something I do for all of my clients' dogs. But it is a little bit uncomfortable because that noise of the clipper is pretty scary. Thank God Chester trusts me and he knows that I'm not going to hurt this. He's like, girl, you better be careful. And I am. So we've got his eyes, okay? There's Chester's eyes, right? You see his eyes? Hey, Chester. He said, oh, my God, I can see. Thank you, Chris. Mwah. Okay. The other places that get matted, um, you're going to see during, in between, this area, the sanitary is what we call it, all around his wee spot will get you no know, matting. And in the inside of his legs, you're going to want to check those really close because those are the areas that are sensitive. This knee right here is very sensitive, and so is this. Um, and if it gets matting and we have to brush it out or clip it, it can be, you know, it can be, it can be a little aggravating to their skin, and they don't, they don't like it. So, um, you know, if you have a dog that is not real comfortable with having his back end handled, um, what I normally do is I will just, you know, I'm going to be that joint. I'm going to, I'm going to take the place of his leg with a bracket. Now, I'm not squeezing, guys. This is a nice bracket. And um, I like to use a guard comb on this area for my dogs because it can um, get razor burn really easy. Um, it's real sensitive. Um, this blade is a rotary motor and the blade never gets hot, but um, some dogs just can't handle the metal on their skin. Um, so I will turn it over to a 40 with a blade on it, and this will allow me to, come here Chester, I know there's, oh Shannon's outside, hi Shannon. Um, this is going to allow me to do my job. So I'm just going to lift up, you know, there's, I'm just giving him a place to rest his legs, and I'm going to start whittling it at that, okay? And I'm going to come right down to the inside of that knee, and I'm going to scoop, and I'm going to just follow. And you can reverse with this. This is not going to be as short. This is just to keep it good so your grimmer can get to it. Some people like a lot tighter of a sanitary, and that's fine. You can use your 10 blade, but I'm telling you, be careful that you don't um, burn their skin. If you don't have a rotary motor uh, clipper like this, it's gonna that blade's going to heat up. Um, the other thing you don't want to do is go down along the edge of these areas with your blades if there's any distance between the teeth. If you have a blade that is like a seven and there's gaps, you can catch that skin. There's real, real sensitive skin right here. So instead of going like this, I'm going to go towards it and under, you know, away, the way in the direction that the hair grows. And he's doing the splits. Okay, if they're not comfortable with you lifting their legs because some dogs are like that, you can put them in the puppy stance like this. Come up and get right in front of that wee area. And I'm, see, I'm going with. I don't want to go down and gouge the skin. And if everything's real gentle, I'm letting the clipper do its job. I'm taking my time until that blade cuts the hair. You don't push through it. And um, as you can see, this this guard comb is going to leave a little bit of hair. He's not going to be, um, you know, bald by any means. And so that's a little more comfortable too because. Sometimes when they get their their groom on, they'll get itchy because, you know, think about razor burn. If when you first you know, your legs get itchy after you've shaved, well, this is leaving a little bit of, of uh, comfort and, and a buffer so they don't feel that way. And they won't be, you know, they won't stop and drop and start licking as soon as you get them home. That's a decent sanitary. You know, you can go a couple inches ahead of the wee so they don't get any urine. It gets the hair off of there. And um, I leave a little protection down here because unless they're matted, and you know, if you're matted, you have to get rid of that hair too. He doesn't have any because we've been keeping him brushed and stuff while he's while he's been on his long stay. Um, another area of the dog that can get um, nasty is the armpits. Oh gosh, and he's sensitive with his front feet, so I'm just gonna have him stand up and stand up and and use me as support. That's this area right here, and he's good right now. Um, he doesn't have any matting at all, but once again, you know, he's been here, so I've been keeping up on that. You're going to going to want to go in that, but just be careful. And I would suggest using a guard comb for this, too. If there's any matting at all, clip it out, you know, um, stand into it. There. Now, you can see this. I'm just going to really swoop in there. Just get rid of any long excess hair that might cause a knot um, while he's waiting for his next groom, okay? And uh, if you don't, then you're going to be surprised when you lift up and go to pet him on his belly and you're going to see all this tight hair in there pulling and causing his dis discomfort. So I always do my armpits, check them, make sure they're nice and healthy. <laughs> all right. Now the hiney hole. Woo. Okay. There's another spot. 
Now the tail, you see these tails? You don't want to cut this. You might as well grow on that out. I'm going to flip that up, and I'm going to take it. And see, I've got him in a bracket. Okay, he's a bracket. I'm not holding on to him. There's my thumb. I don't know if you can see my thumb, but it's nice and loose. I'm going to take that tail, and I'm going to use my index finger to hold that back in a way. Because the last thing I want is to cut that tail. Now I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, Go around here a little bit so he's comfortable with the idea of me being in that area because I don't want him to move um, and when I go to, to clip it. And then I've got you know no hair where I should have long hair. Um, we just want just enough. And then you can do it like this too. You know, as long as you keep that tail out of the equation. And I'm once again, I'm doing this with guard combs. I don't want you guys taking a 10 blade to your dog's butt right now. I'm not necessary. This gets enough away from there to keep it from getting poop on it. But not enough weight, not enough to where you're going to hurt the dog or scrape the, you know, clip that tail, that sphincter skin that's real sensitive. You can go and just do a little shape in that. I'm not going to. Um, okay, so there's there's the there's the hiney hole. Pop pads. Once again, bracket guys, and, and you see how I'm down on his I'm down on his hock here. I'm not grabbing up here. I'm I'm, I'm letting him rest right here on the on my thumb and then i'm going to start playing again with that hair and get him comfortable with the idea that i'm going to be working down here okay this is a well a lot of you guys can use a 10 blade i use a 40 stay chester if he starts to move because his friends are going i'm gonna put my pinky right there and keep that knee from going forward just guiding him you know i caught my guide hands now you don't have to get real fancy with this this keeps them from sliding around on the floors from bringing mud into your house um you go all the way just See these little pop hats here? I'm gonna take the tip of my blade and I'm just gonna outline those. You know, I'm just I'm just drawing around these and making sure all those little pads are exposed. And I'm not pushing, I'm gently touching. The more you tap, the more the dog is gonna wiggle. Cause think of this tickle. Some dogs are ticklish. And when you start doing this, they go to kicking you because it's just so ticklish. So you wanna make sure that you're going in and you're not doing a lot of tap, tap, tap and irritating things. Now you can separate the paw pad and look in there and sometimes I take that hair out if it's discolored because it means they've been chewing at it okay and it's gonna be a little weird for him when I do that but I'm not digging I'm tapping with the tip of my blade and I'm not going all the way down to that that fold of skin in there because you can cut it all right we don't want to do that so now he's got his paw, his paw up like that and he's in a pretty good form you see that little cute paw I'm gonna take okay nails watch and pay attention I'll probably do a whole nother video just on nails but I've got him bracketed. I'm not grabbing or squeezing. I'm taking that one, that one paw pad. See that? This I am, I do have a hold of. It's gonna give him stability. I'm gonna find my nail. Don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see the pink on him. He's easy because he's got, you know, pink quicks, white nails. Um, so here's my Dremel. And he's like, I don't know, Chris, but he's gonna let me because we've established that I'm gentle. And I'm just gonna peel, I call it peel him an apple. Okay, you're gonna peel your apple. Now a bunch of cat, 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 cat. But a nice. I'm gonna grab this one now. Peel that apple. There you go. Peel it. And you want to go to where you can see the start of that quick. It's kind of like doing your own nails. Which mine are really bad right now. But um, there, there it is. And I'm just gonna go at an angle the way the nail grows. And with a little dog like this, if you use a Dremel with a 15 setting. It only takes like four passes and you're done, unless you've let them really get out of hand. This dog is about four weeks since his last time his nails were done. So yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Because um, I'm doing this video by myself, but there's a little bullseye right there. It's, it's just where it might start to, you know, I never make him bleed um, at all. I don't agree with that. But I want, as soon as I see that bullseye, that's a wet spot. I mean, that's a little bit further and I definitely would make this dog bleed. So. I don't know if you can see that well or not. Come here, Chester, good boy. But um, his nails finished. Finished. Okay, so he's got a little bit of hair still poking out there. I'm gonna go back in there and clean a little bit of that up. This is a thorough job. When you get home, when he gets home from the groomer, you don't wanna see a bunch of hair sticking out of the bottom of your dog's paw pads, but yours doesn't have to be quite that perfect. You wanna round his little feet? Um, I got curved shears for that. But the, the key with that, and you know, I probably won't spend a lot of time on this. I don't expect anybody to do this at home, but there might be some people that are going to try. Get all that hair cleared off and away from the edge of the foot. Anything that's going to stick out on the bottom, that's the key to making those nice little ugg feet. 
you just want to make sure that everything that's going to touch the ground is trimmed away. Okay, and then you've got a nice, all you got to do after that, <laughs> let me see if I can get this. Mm -hmm. Sorry guys, I'm trying. I don't have the equipment for this. Um, is you, you can brush and get all the hair ready to go, okay? Get rid of any stuff that you don't need. You can do this on your kitchen table and do it on your counter. Um, but make sure that you have something under the dog that is going to keep them from sliding around. These tables have traction on them, and they're antimicrobial, and they're wonderful. You can do it with a rubber mat, too. Um, any kind of rubber mat would work. But I'm just going to trim around the foot, and I'm going to make them have a cute little cute little ugly foot. You can test it down here. You don't want any shelves hanging out. So just trim it up, make it look cute. And, you know, play with it. But then you got yourself a little foot. And this isn't going to be the perfect room because, like I said, his mom's going to be here to pick him up, take him home. My job is we're supposed to just get him clean, but I'm, I'm doing a little extras. I'm going to do the front foot in case you guys were. Same thing, bracket. I don't know if you can see that hold or not. That's a bracket. It's resting. He doesn't like his front feet handle, but look at what a good boy he's been because it's everything's been gentle with love, no force. Gentle with love, no force. He said, How do you do that with my dog? I can't even brush him. Gentle, no force in love. And just, you know, very, very confident. Don't don't get nervous and pull away. You know, if you start finding yourself getting nervous, slow down until your heart rate slows down and that dog will pick up on it. If you start getting nerved up, they're going to feel it and they're going to want to get away from you because you're not going to make any sense to them. They're like, oh, gosh, she's a mess. I'm getting away. So um, now the front feet nails can be a little trickier. Once again, bracket. My middle finger is what I'm using for the bracket. Each individual toe resting nice and quietly so he's not feeling it, the vibration in his paw. Uh-uh, easy. Now I'm not gonna, he started to pull away a little bit because he does not like his front nails done. So, that's okay. Uh-uh, Chester. Come here, baby, good boy, come here. Now I didn't quit when he was moving on purpose because I don't want him to know that if he moves that it's gonna go away because that would be going against everything we've taught. Now see he gave me a little kiss and you guys think that's cute and it is cute because I know Chester's not going to bite me but some dogs will kiss before they bite. It just tells you they're nervous. You're in their bite zone and you know they're telling you hey I'm here and I love you but I could bite you so please please understand that I'm nervous and I do so I just reposition him. Uh -uh. I can talk to him make noises for distraction and just zip, we're just going to zip through these as quickly as we can and then He's going to say, oh, that wasn't bad. All right, so you guys are getting the idea, right? Now, you guys can use your hand nail clippers. I'm going to do the debt on a different video, too, if, if I have a request for it. But I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. And the reason why I don't like them is because that's how people click nails. I don't click nails with the Dremel. You're not going to make them bleed if you use a Dremel. If you use your nail uh, cl hand clippers, you're going to... Make them bleed if you don't know where that quick is at. And you can't always know where that quick is at. Sometimes they grow funny. Long and low. So that being said, guys, if you can get a Dremel and you can get yourself comfortable using it, do that. Even with the tiniest nails, just take the setting down. Do like a 15 instead of uh, cranking that bad boy up. If it's a basset hound, I'm going to crank it up. And the other nice thing about using a Dremel is that, um, good boy, bracket, bracket, see the bracket? Nothing by force. Nothing by force. He's such a good boy. Okay, so he's got another little paw ready for mama. And yeah, this is restraint free, guys. I do I do my dogs this way. And um, I don't have the trouble out of them. And I teach my girls to do the same thing. Because if a dog is fighting, 99% of the time I can tell you it's because they're feeling like they're forced to do something. And I fight too. When someone forces me to do something, man, I get, I get mad. I get aggravated. I might try to get away from that person I mean, I, I'm not a violent person, thank God, so I don't think if I was a dog, I would bite. But you can push them to bite them, you know, because that's just their way of communicating. They're not being naughty, and they're not trying to give you crap. They're just simply saying, I don't like it. And they're going to keep telling you until you figure out what the hell it is they're trying to communicate. So here's the next one. Ah, ah, ah. I'm going to get behind him, okay? Oh, I can show you another trick. I don't know if you can see this. But if I hold him, let's do this. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm using the mirror to gauge whether or not you can see it. Um, if I hold a dog like this and I start to bounce him like a baby, <laughs> a lot of times I can get that nail done. Like I said, love cures off. 
So if he feels mm, like I'm loving him, he can only think of one thing at a time. He's going to love me. This Chester is a love bug. And I can still do my nails job done. Huh, buddy? Yeah. But just pick him up, hold him, love him. You know, give him a break from... Don't let him get to the point where they're fighting you. You know, if they do, go back to where it was good. And, you know, it doesn't have to... This, I'm going to do this all at once because he's going home, but you guys are home. You got nothing better to do than connect with your dogs right now. Hi, baby. I'm almost done. Okay. So we got Duclaws left. He's, he's about done. My husband came in to help me last minute. It's okay, Chester. And you're going to have distractions. Someone walks in and you lose your dog. So that's what just happened. That's okay. You're going to have kids. I'm going to show you how to get them back on track. You rub behind the ears. Hi, baby. Hi. Good boy. And then you wait a minute. Don't, don't start fighting them because if you start fighting them, you'll never get them back. So my hands again are telling where I need them to be. And I'm not... Is not by force. I'm gonna ask him to sit. Good boy. Okay, all I got left to do are do claws on him. And um, those are, can be a little bit tricky. So, so I'm gonna hold it nice and steady. Oh, you wanna go see Jimmy? Okay. See, Jimmy walked in, didn't pet him or nothing. So we're gonna do this again. Well, he picked up that stupid camera, didn't he? All right. The do claw, I'm gonna poke it out. Once again, you pick them up, you're going to be in better shape. One more dew claw, the, the hardest one for me, because it's closest to me and I can't see it. Yeah, we're going to have to do this. Okay, once again, no, no uh, force. I'm popping that. I'm holding it with my index finger and my thumb. And I'm going to go in there and just, I'm not going to tap it a lot, because that's going to aggravate him. I'm going to get that edge off. There, peel that apple back. Dew claws are unnerving, guys, even for a groomer. Because you can't hardly get to them and the hair gets in the way. And they don't like them. All right. Once again, we're just going to do this real quick. Ugg feet. Trim off the hair around the bottom. Good enough. All right, he's gonna get a little bit of a visor, then he can go home, huh? And then for the visor, it's the same thing. Yeah, you know, I got all my extra hair out here, so that gives me plenty to work with on the tech. I'm gonna comb it all forward. I'm bracketing, because he doesn't like his uh, chin hair pulled. None of them do. I'm gonna set these ears back, and not enough to where it's gonna pull the hair away from the face, though, just gently. So I don't cut any of his hair hair off. This is stuff you guys can do at home. I have curved scissors. You can do it with straight ones. Curves are easier. And you're gonna wanna, hey, the boy. Let him rest his head. He's a little squirmy for his face and that's okay. And you're gonna, see I've got curved shears. If you have straight shears, you're gonna wanna bring them out as you get to the edge. Cause you want this side here to be where it's gonna fall, you know, decent. If you cut back into that, he's gonna lose the shadow over his eyes and his expression. It's okay. And if you guys get thinners, I see a lot of people are out buying grooming equipment. The thinners are good for this because all you can, all you have to do is just, you know, you can eliminate anything that hangs over, but it's not a sharp cut. It's, it's very forgiving. It doesn't cut everything. It just cuts, it softens it up. I caught my, my eraser. There you go, boy. It's got some devil horns. Anything that sticks up over your line you want to get rid of and then I can just do this and now you can see so he's done he's going home just that that's got a that's a tidy up between grooms feet face and fanny if he had matting in here which he does not I would work on that yeah check that area I almost forgot check check their mustache and check underneath here mats. I know. Look in the flu area. That's kind of gross. It's kind of ganky. I'm going to get rid of that. Just with the tip. Don't cut the lip. Don't even go to the lip. Just right. Leave yourself a little bit of space. 
and just erase it with the tip of your clipper. Just erase just that corner and that, that gross stuff is gone. Now your breath won't stick so bad. Okay, shake it off. Good boy. See your brother. Okay. It's good, baby.